Being an expert in treating animals is one thing. Bringing compassion to that care is another. At MedVet Columbus, they strive to be a partner in keeping your pet as healthy as possible. So in today's sponsored segment, I'm happy to have with me veterinarian Ellen Neal, and we also have hospital director Joe Colidon, who is joining me as well. So thank you both for being here. Thanks for having, Thanks us. For having us. All right, so Joe, I want you to give us the background. Um, yeah. MedVet really does cover the gamut when it comes to animal care, right? We do. So MedVet is a large organization full of emergency, critical care, and specialty hospitals. Um, we're across the United States. We've got about 49 locations. Uh, MedVet Diley Hill is in Canal Winchester, which is where Dr. Neal and I are from. Um, and we're strictly emergency. Um, we're able to do our own surgeries there as well as hospitalized patients, um, but we're located in Canal Winchester, Ohio. Okay, perfect. So Dr. Neal, that leads us to the emergency care then. If somebody is out there, what exactly qualifies or what is something that would happen to an animal that would kind of say, hey, yes, we need to go right now. Yeah, well, pets like people have accidents, have emergencies. Um, so if they are sick or injured and are unable to get their, to their family veterinarian, that's when they come to the emergency clinic. And we see a whole host of different things. So we see lacerations, bite wounds, toxin ingestions, foreign body ingestion, and trauma, like getting hit by a car, getting hit by a tractor, getting hit by a bus, all sorts of things. Um, and we also get referrals from family veterinarians too. So if they see something abnormal on blood work or on the exam, they'll often refer it to us for doing additional diagnostics or treatments. And that can be things like weight loss, lameness, um, bruising, chronic uh, respiratory issues. So we see a lot of things at the emergency clinic. I know, and I was gonna say, you often say that you're the, a partner, right, to their veterinarian, their family kind of animal doc. So that is part of where you get that referral. They may go to that doctor and the doctor says, hey, this is a little bit more than, than we can handle here, right? And then refer them to you? Exactly, and we try to have a collaborative relationship with the family vet too. I will often call and say, hey, are you comfortable treating this? Or do you have this? And make sure that I'm on the same page as them. So it's a very collaborative relationship. Okay, then let's talk to you, Joe, the role of clinical services in providing care, in providing that, right, to the pet, to the family, the pet owner. Um, what does that look like? So our clinical services team is usually gonna be that first group of caregivers that you see when you walk into our hospitals. That can be anywhere from our client service representatives that are gonna help that client as soon as they enter our buildings, to our veterinary assistants, credentialed technicians and tech assistants who are working collaboratively, collaboratively with our medical teams to provide the necessary treatments and care for those pets so that we can get them home with their owners. And I love that you mentioned you guys have specialty services. Yeah. You don't often think about needing an eye doctor and internal doctor, I mean, all of these different specialties for your pet. But yeah. Yeah. They are needed. They yes. are, and occasionally we do have to use those. And yeah. we're lucky enough that we work very close with our location in Columbus where we're able to utilize a lot of those specialties with us being an only ER hospital. Okay, yeah. that makes perfect sense. All right, seasons are a change in. So let's talk about some of the things that usually have to be careful with your pet around town um, during the fall. Dr. Neal, first one we're going to talk about is tailgating. Yeah, so it's football season. So yes. there's tailgating and watch parties and all sorts of things happening. Um, and it's a good time to enjoy with, with your friends like greasy foods, like, you know, chips and burgers and fries and alcohol as well. Um, but it's definitely not a good idea to give that to your pets because it can cause major gastrointestinal issues characterized by vomiting and diarrhea and lethargy. Um, and it can really amplify to more severe things like pancreatitis. So it's really good to stay away from that. Um, we can also see toxin ingestions around that time. So animals being fed chocolate, onions, garlic, raisins, grapes, all those things can cause major metabolic issues like kidney failure. Uh, and lastly, we can see choking hazards. So people that give like chicken bones or rib mm -hmm. bones to yeah. patients, we, can, we see them come to the ER choking on those. So um, it's a good idea not to give your pets any sort of food that you would have at a tailgating party. Yeah, and, and as you mentioned, alcohol being involved, unfortunately, sometimes I'm sure they stop paying attention maybe as closely as the night <laughs> goes on and yes. those things can happen. So maybe leave them at home yeah. during yes. the tailgate. <laughs> All right, Joe, what about the fall leaves? I didn't even think of that being any kind of safety concern. Yeah, so fall leaves and big piles of leaves can seem very innocent, especially kids are playing them and things like that. But those piles of leaves can harbor bacteria and mold that can be detrimental to your your pet's health. Occasionally you may find a sharp stick or something like that in those piles as well where we see patients that can actually injure their skin that way. They can chew on those sticks and actually ingest them causing gastrointestinal issues as well as sometimes we'll see them present to the ER with it stuck in the roof of their mouth. So oh. those are things that you definitely want to make sure that you're keeping an eye on during this time of year when you're outside with your pet. Yeah, they're scary. Okay, and then let's briefly touch on the last one because a lot of people dress their pets up for tailgates and for Halloween, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So what do we need to be careful about? 
So we definitely need to be careful that those costumes are not too tight and constricting your, your pet's movement. You need to make sure that they're able to use the bathroom with those on and just that it's nothing that's going to scare them or anything like that. Make sure that they're comfortable ahead of when you're going to actually have them wear it so they can get used to wearing it. Okay, well, let's tell people the team available 24 seven, which is the good news Medvet. Again, they're in Canal Winchester, but there are other locations. So go to the website and find one near you. Always good to have that number on hand. Yes, for when is. the emergency yep. strikes. So thank you for being here. Thanks for having us. Thank you.